Hey, what's up guys? Me, David, back with another video, and today I'm gonna to be talking about the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, and what it means for the rest of the Android space. Um, I have been reading from the Verge article that released fairly recently, and it does uh, say a lot. I would highly recommend you read the article from The Verge. I think they did an excellent job summarizing a lot of the stuff I'm going to be talking about today. As you guys know, the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro have a massive camera bar. They're going to be using Google's new Tensor SoCs, um, and they have a bit of a quality upgrade. And so that's basically the summary of what the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro are going to be. And so. If, if you look at the article, it has a bunch of details about what Google's promising the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro are going to become. Um, but I think something that uh, the Google and The Verge focused on a lot was the Tensor SoC. Now, what is the Tensor SoC? Um, SoC, as you guys know, is um, System on a Chip. And it's basically what the Snapdragon series is. Snapdragon 845, you know, all those things. Uh, those are SoCs, which means that Everything that a computer needs for operating in terms of CPU, GPU, RAM, you know, little micro chips, all of those are all on one chip. So it's all packaged in one chip. Because everything is packaged on one chip, it's going to save a lot of space on the PCB. And if you look at actual uh, like PCBs, motherboards on phones, they're very small compared to PCBs on computers. And that's because everything is on one chip. And so the PCB is only like this big on iPhones. Um, which is impressive and the rest of the space is occupied by uh, batteries and um, like small um, like components and stuff like that and small like additional like daughter boards occasionally. But another thing is that they do offer some sort of performance increase. Because all of these are small little chips that are very weak uh, compared to a desktop chip, like uh, an SoC is smaller than an Intel CPU package. So having an SoC means that everything is closer together and that will automatically increase the rate of data transfer between chips. So you could have a CPU, a GPU, and RAM. When it's packaged so close to each other, there's going to be very minimal delays between each of these components, which will increase the speed and the energy efficiency of the components, which is also another major benefit of having a system on a chip. So overall, an SoC is an extremely beneficial form of a chip. Now the Tensor chip is uh, very interesting because Google does claim that it's been four years in the making. Uh, Sundar Pichai actually posted a tweet about this. And the Tensor chip looks basically like an Intel chip if you took the uh, metal heatsink off of it. Um, it. It just looks like a very standard chip. Uh, the interesting part is the AI um, part of it. Uh, I remember back in the day when I was building my PC, uh, my latest PC, which you can see like the build somewhere up here. Um, or just go into my channel and check it out. Uh, that was back when Ryzen first came out, which is AMD's uh, like new series of chips. And I was using a Ryzen CPU, but my, for my GPU, I bought uh, an NVIDIA graphics card, and they have something called CUDA cores. Now, CUDA cores are much more efficient than CPUs um, at doing AI and uh, machine learning type of things. And so a lot of like people that worked at Microsoft, a lot of people that worked at any of these companies that focused on AI, were very interested in using NVIDIA graphics cards for their uh, computers. Now the Tensor chip is kind of like a miniaturized version of that, uh, based on my understanding of it. The Tensor chip, what it does is it makes AI more efficient. Now this sounds very familiar. We've heard this before. And where have we heard this before? We've heard this before from Apple, from the uh, M1 chip. The M1 chip has the exact same type of feature included inside of it, except it does seem that the, uh, the Tensor chip from Google is a little bit more advanced just because Google's in this business. Uh, they put a TPU inside of it. Um, basically a TPU, all you need to know is that it's used in Google servers. It's their like proprietary uh, processing chip that is used in Google's data servers. And so they have a lot of experience making TPUs and they've just put like a small TPU on the SoC of the Tensor chip, uh, which is very interesting. Um, now what does that mean? Google says that what it could be able to do is put HDR feature on video, which is extremely impressive because HDR, what it does is it takes multiple pictures and it combines them together and it makes it so that the highlights and the dark lights, uh, the shadows, and makes optimizes it 
So basically what that means in layman's terms is HDR turns the photo that looks very dark or too bright and it makes it look very like flat and even. Uh, everything just looks good, uh, like in terms of light. And so that's what an HDR feature does. It's very processor intensive and a normal CPU would probably not be able to handle that uh, extreme load uh, just because if you're taking 24 frames of 4K per, vi uh, per second, you have to take more than 24, probably around 120 uh, frames, process them all in real time, and then output that as video, which is extremely uh, CPU intensive, GPU intensive. Now, with this Tensor chip, uh, with this TPU, it can do that at a much more efficient rate and it's much easier for the processor to do. So those are some of the benefits that a TPU offers. Uh, the Verge article claims that Google could potentially make a more competitive chip that could differentiate its products. Um, and then it also goes on to say that um, that Osterlo, one of the, product, the main product designers, uh, says that it could be market leading. I mean, The Verge doesn't exactly say it, but it does seem to suggest that the Tensor chip is going to be a competitor to Qualcomm's chips in the same way that Samsung's, um, Samsung's proprietary chips and uh, MediaTek's chips are a competitor to Qualcomm outside of the US market. Google's Tensor chips are going to be a competitor to Qualcomm inside the US market. That seems like a bit of a stretch to me. That implication seems a bit of a stretch. And uh, the Verge article does say that Qualcomm has a virtual monopoly on processors in the US. Worldwide, there is a bit of a more com com worldwide there is a little bit more competition as Samsung, MediaTek, and Huawei all have chips on Android phones. Blah 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 blah. Um, this Google chip is not probably going to be a competitor um, to Samsung. Uh, this chip is not going to be a competitor to Qualcomm, most likely, um, just because it's not going to be in high demand. Uh, machine learning chips are not super necessary right now, especially for the majority of the market, which is not in the high tier, which is where these machine learning chips are going, but in the mid tier and the low tier. Most people do not want to pay a thousand dollars or more for their phone. The biggest range is like 400 to 800 dollars, which insanely enough is considered mid tier now. So that in that range, machine learning chips are not going to be highly prevalent um, just because of the price constraints. And uh, Qualcomm is no slouch. They're going to be continuing to develop stuff and I know for a fact that Qualcomm is working on um, AI. Uh, I don't know about a machine learning chip but they do have people working on AI and so it's just I don't think Google is going to be able to take market share out of um, Qualcomm's monopoly. Um, Google is a very small manufacturer. It's a boutique manufacturer of phones so if someone like, let's say Apple, um, let's say Apple was an Android company, let's say Apple was an Android company using Qualcomm, but they decided to switch over to um, their own proprietary chips. If that happened, then in that case, that would make a huge dent on Qualcomm's market share. But this is not the case. Google takes up very little market share on the market. They basically own nothing in the market. And so Google uh, switching to their own chips is going to do nothing to Qualcomm sales. Uh, Google basically sells no phones. Uh -huh. And so, just because of that fact, it's not going to take market share and no one's going to buy from Google over Qualcomm. That just doesn't seem like something that's going to happen in the near future. Uh, so for overall implications to the Android space, basically what this is going to do is it's going to introduce competition in the US market, but not a huge amount of competition. Adding machine learning chips. Qualcomm has probably already been thinking of doing that and they've probably already had that in the works for a couple of years just because that's the way that the overall trajectory of the market seems to be and has always seemed to be going where machine learning and AI is getting more and more integrated into chips. That being said, Google is um, the first one to fire the salvo and so Qualcomm is probably going to rush uh, their chips a little bit more now and so we're going to be seeing a lot more AI related content. Uh, for um, chips in the future and uh, it'll be interesting to see how this goes and how this progresses because right now the applications the concrete applications that we've seen for a machine learning chip is not that impressive it's uh, it's HDR on video um, you can remove like Google claimed that it could remove fences from its photos stuff like that um, 
It's useful, but it's not that impressive for day-to-day -day use. And so it will be interesting to see over the years, it, as machine learning chips progress in terms of their uh, uh, capacity, how the practical day-to-day -day applications increase as well. So that's really what I'm interested in. And a lot of geniuses thinking about how that's going to work and how they're going to make that work in the future. Uh, thank you guys for watching. This has been an extremely long video, and I apologize for that. Uh, I'm just very interested in how the market is going to change as a result of this uh, content. Uh, I will highly recommend that you watch the uh, video from The Verge and um, the video and the accompanying article from The Verge. And I highly recommend you do some of your own research about this as well. This is a highly fascinating and a very uh, interesting subject to look about. And so uh, please do some reading on your own and type some comments down below about what you think. So thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.